I want to make this program for a short while. I think that the a class on economics. I think the most important thing that we can do here at Tom Hartman University, the most important thing that we can do, is if we want to prevent a crash or if we want to make it through the coming crash, is understand economics. It's really a circle, right? It's, 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 so when you say, okay, how do we define an economy? Well, there's really not a starting point, but, but there is a most important point. So let's start there. Demand. Demand is created by basically three things. Basic human needs, people need to eat, they need to sleep, they need a, ho- a roof over their head, he- needs. Desires, people want things. These are, are all things that you would say, oh, that makes perfect sense, that's demand. And paychecks, they have to have a way to fulfill that demand. And in terms of an economy, paychecks are you know, arguably one of the most important parts, because without a paycheck, without income, you can't get needs and desires met. So you got a paycheck, and you go out and you spend that. Well over 90% of Americans spend the vast majority, well over 95% of all the money that they make every single week, they spend it. Spend it at the store, they spend it at the movies, they spend it for rent, they spend it you know, at the grocery store, whatever. But you, So you go to the store and you buy something. Now the store has to pay the clerk who helps you out, and the stock boy who stocks the shelves, or girl, or whatever. And the, 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 uh, the people who run the the, the machines, the, the checkout machines. and the, I mean, there's a billion things that go in. All those jobs are created because you bought something at that store. The store has to buy from their wholesalers. They have to buy from their manufacturers. The manufacturers have to get the raw materials to make their stuff. If it's like paper products, they have to go to a logger. If it's, you know, car doors, the, the original source was a mine someplace. I mean, this is all along the way, it started out as dirt in the ground and it has ended up as a car, as, as an automobile. Or it has ended up as the top of a jar of, of pasta or a tomato sauce for pasta. right? And every step along the way for that thing that you bought in that supermarket, jobs were created to get it there so that you could buy it. And every one of those jobs put money into workers' pockets. So not only are you the job creator as the consumer... Because you're starting the cycle by buying something, but you're contributing to the money that goes into the pockets of all these workers all along the way, and each one of them is going to take their their paycheck and go to a store and buy something, and thus demand spreads through the economy. And it all starts with you having a paycheck. Demand is the most important in this cycle of an economy. Now, obviously, you've got demand on the one side, you've got supply on the other. You, you have a paycheck and you, had a de- and you have a need or a desire. You go to the store and you say, I want something. Well, they've got to have it. They have to have supply. But demand is more important than supply because without demand, those three pieces of demand, a paycheck, a need, and a desire, without all three of those, or at least two of the three of those, the paycheck and either the need or the desire. There's no economic activity. You can have supply all day long. You have completely full stores. You got people who have no money. They can't generate demand in an economy. Now, it is true that suppliers can stimulate demand. They can come out with a new kind of phone. They can come out with a new computer, for example. This is the stuff that's always thrown out by you know, supply-siders. Oh, you know, Apple, IBM. But, the, but it really it proves the point, because if you got no paycheck, people can have desires all day long, but they don't have genuine what's referred to in economics as demand, because demand requires the ability to pay for something. I mean, arguably, you, you, know, you could say people will smash in windows and steal things. That's really not, in economic terms, that's not demand. And this is why the whole idea of supply-side economics is stupid. The real job creators, they're the people who buy things. So what happens when the job creators, the consumers, the people, you know, the, 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 the people who buy things and thus create this virtuous cycle, what happens when they can't buy things because either they lose their wages or they lose their entire job? Demand collapses. There's no more things to buy in the store. You know, there's no more buying from the store. The store is not, you're not buying from the store. The store is not buying from the wholesaler. 
The wholesaler's not buy- buying from the manufacturer. The manufacturer's not buying from the miner or the logger. And at each step along the way, all of those people pay employees. All of their employees are getting laid off. And all of those people now are no longer able to go to the store and buy things. So demand right down the line starts to collapse and the economy spirals into a depression. And this was always the way it was in the United States from the founding of the Republic until the 1930s, which is why we never went more than 15 years without a stock market crash from 1787 to 1935. But then FDR, at the recommendation of John Maynard Keynes, put into place stabilizers to prevent these spirals that are inherent in capitalism. Since 1935, when people are unemployed, they can still buy things. And the reason they can still buy things is because they have unemployment insurance, insurance, food stamps, stuff like that. In other words, they, they still have the ability to buy. Additionally, government spending increases demand when capitalism fails by hiring people to do things like fix roads and bridges. These people now have paychecks so they can resume their role as job creators, spending at the store. And when government spending is high enough, that downward spiral gets broken and the economy, the economy recovers. And then when the economy recovers, of course, the people who were getting government paychecks are now paying money into the government in taxes, and the deficit seems to go away. It doesn't seem to. It does go away. It pays down the government's debt. Econ 101. Pass it along. This is the Tom Hartman Program. And the thing that is so astounding to me is how few conservatives, sir, obviously none who watch Fox News, get this. 